Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be discussing something few people enjoy, giving presentations, specifically giving presentations in data science interviews. Most people do not really like public speaking. However, it is an essential skill in almost any job. Data science is no exception to this. As a data scientist, you will have to present your ideas and findings to stakeholders, which is why many companies require candidates to give presentations when interviewing for a data scientist position. Typically, it ranges from 45 minutes to 1 hour, with the majority of the time on presentation and the last 10 to 15 minutes on Q&A. Presentations can be nerve-wracking, but they are a vital part of proving that you are a capable data scientist. Data scientists have to be sailors that can drive conversations to convince stakeholders to buy into their suggestions and ideas. The presentation part of an interview is where you demonstrate your ability to be a driver and not just a supporter. It is crucial if you want to land a position, especially a senior position. But how do you make the most of it? In this video, I will go over 5 tips for giving presentations in interviews. If you want to deliver a killer presentation, you need to know what information to include, what details to highlight, and how to carry yourself to make the best impression with the interviewer. This video will be covering all that and a bit more, so let's get started. My first tip is to focus on your impact. Projects are usually a team effort involving more than just data scientists. It takes a lot of collaboration and teamwork to successfully complete a project. Despite this reality, this is not what interviewers tend to care about when you present a project. They are interested in you, not the rest of the team. Therefore, you want to focus on your role and impact. To convey your impact clearly, you should describe it in measurable terms. Use metrics and numbers to explain your achievements on the project. The best metrics are those that show the effect you had on the business. This includes things like increasing revenue, customer acquisition, customer retention, etc. If you know what impact your work had on a business metric, this is an ideal way to illustrate your impact in a presentation. For example, you might say that you can increase any revenue by 10%, or that on a six-month project, you improve customer retention by 20%. Specific metrics with specific numbers are the best way to show your impact. However, sometimes connecting your work to a direct impact on the business is very difficult. It may be that the scope of the project was not large enough or that the project is only indirectly affecting a business metric. If this is the case, you still want to describe your impact using metrics that the interviewer can easily understand. You can talk about things like improving team efficiency, and productivity by building data pipelines, or about how a data modeling or analytics tool you built or methodology you developed was adopted by multiple teams across the company. Although these findings do not say exactly what impact you have on the business, it is clear that you are positively impacting the overall company. Improving team productivity is sure to lead to improved business metrics. What you should avoid in describing your impact are details that do not clearly explain how you help the business. For example, simply saying that you improve the model performance is not helpful for an interviewer. It is unclear exactly how impactful that improvement is. Stick with metrics that are clear to someone without a technical background, and if you have them, business metrics are the best. This tip about focusing on your impact does not only apply to presentations. When describing past projects in an interview, the impact is also very important. You can check out this video on how to describe a past project in a behavior interview in which I provide a better alternative to the STAR method. My next tip is to use your best stuff. This tip might seem painfully obvious at first. Of course, you want to present your best project. However, what exactly do we mean by best? It can be tempting to present a project that you feel was the most successful, but your most successful project is often also an easy project. When I say present your best stuff, I'm more so referring to the best stuff about you rather than the most successful project. Talking about a project with challenges gives you far more opportunities to display your skill, thoughtfulness, and uniqueness as a candidate. Challenging projects also tend to be more interesting, so it's much easier to capture the interviewer's attention. How do you decide which project has challenges you can talk about? Here are some examples of challenges that might make a project more interesting and effective to present. There are both technical and non-technical challenges. Some technical challenges would be 
problems defining success metrics, difficulty obtaining data, a large data set that was hard to work with, low quality data, difficulty processing the data, and issues with model training and deployment. Some non-technical challenges would be other people initially did not like your idea, strict deadlines, resource constraints, and your team hit the block during the project. These are just some examples of things that might have created obstacles or been an issue with the project. Talking about things like these challenges gives you a chance to show a wide range of capability and again keeps your presentation far more engaging. Challenges are not the only thing that makes a project your best. You also want a project where you were heavily involved. Pick a project where you feel comfortable highlighting your actions in the various steps of the process. Explain things like the project design and implementation feasibility to demonstrate that you understand your job and its implications. This shows that you can drive projects because you understand how the entire thing works. So when you pick a project to present, choose one that captures you at your best. This often means choosing to talk about a project that has some problems and obstacles. This idea leads us to the third tip, list the limitations of the project. Listing the limitations of a project typically requires a conscious effort on your part, because most of us want to do the exact opposite when giving a presentation. It's tempting to skip or skim over the issues and limitations that arose during a project. However, the limitations you face on a particular project are not something that you want to bypass in a presentation, specifically when discussing data quality and technical feasibility, but why? It may seem like talking about things that went wrong can hurt you. The fact is that simply knowing how to use specific techniques, such as a machine learning model, is not enough. Anyone can learn to do that. To impress your audiences, you need to demonstrate a knowledge of the method's advantages and limitations in your application. Show awareness about what was not ideal in your situation. For example, you may have faced a limitation with data. Perhaps there were problems with data collection, and your team did not have enough data to do analysis or modeling. To overcome this limitation, you may have had to do some research to find an external data source, or you have proposed and implemented a creative way to leverage existing data. What this example shows is that listing the limitations gives you a chance to discuss how you improved or plan to improve. Therefore, awareness of limitations indicates a capability for growth and demonstrates your problem-solving skills. It shows that you can identify weaknesses in a plan and work to mitigate them. The first three tips should help you decide which project to talk about. But now that you have picked the project, how do you prepare to present it? Everyone's method differs, but there's one thing that I suggest everyone do, and that is my fourth tip, which is to think through the technical details of a project. You likely won't have time to explain every technical aspect of a project, but you want to ensure that you have a thorough understanding of everything you do choose to talk about. You will often be asked follow-up questions in the Q&A session or during the presentation that will require a thorough understanding of the technical details of the project. For instance, an audience might ask you things like, does it make sense to convert a continuous variable to a categorical variable? What if the distribution is a long-tailed? Or, with a tree-based model, do you need to concern about overfitting if it's a random forest model? So make sure that you are comfortable enough with all the technical details of a project you plan to present so that you can answer follow-up questions. We have talked about selecting a project to present and preparing to present. Our final tip looks at the one thing we haven't touched yet, the actual presenting stage. When preparing a presentation, content certainly matters, and so far that's what our tips have focused on. What type of project to select and what aspect of that project to focus on in your presentation. However, having fantastic content is not the only thing that makes a presentation successful. The interviewer will also be evaluating the way you handle yourself when giving a presentation. Your behavior matters and is one of the things that will evaluate it during a presentation. Although you want to appear as someone you can sell their ideas and drive conversation, you do not want to come across as arrogant or egotistic. Part of being a good presenter is demonstrating that you are a good listener. No one wants to work with a coworker who refuses to listen to others and consider different perspectives. Therefore, when giving a presentation, it is important to show an openness to questions and suggestions, or even criticism. 
Listen to different opinions, even those that disagree with your own, and take the time to analyze them. You can then either persuade your audience of your own view or admit your limitations in that matter. Many times, this simply means admitting that someone has a good question and thinking of a solution. Do not dismiss others' opinions and concerns because this implies that you will not be a good coworker. During a presentation, you should carry yourself in a way that shows confidence and capability, while also demonstrating that you value different perspectives. All right, guys, that's everything. To recap, my five tips for delivering a killer presentation are focus on your impact, use your best stuff, list the limitations, think through the technical details, and the behavior does matter. I hope you found these tips helpful. All of these tips are oriented around one major idea. A presentation in an interview is less about presenting a project and more about presenting yourself as a data scientist. When preparing and delivering your presentation, your focus should be on demonstrating that you are a capable data scientist. This means your presentation should go beyond simply explaining the bare facts of the project. You want to demonstrate your impact, your ability to problem solve, your technical skills and knowledge, and the ability to behave professionally and drive the conversation. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get updates about future content. I will see you soon.